Welcome back to our second video on the Gaussian plume model. This is the one where we're going to dive into the meat of the equation itself and to understand how it's working. And also to see that it really is just a, a, a generalization of what we did with the diffusion model. So first, uh, the diffusion model had a single mass that was emitted at a single point in time. In the Gaussian plume model, we now have a continual amount of mass uh, emitted uh, over time. And so taking the place of a single mass is Q, the mass of pollutant exiting per unit time. But, uh, and that Q, that mass per unit time is then being divided by the wind speed, uh, the distance per time. So we kind of get mass per unit distance. Um, and so that's kind of taking the place of, of a, instead of a single release, we have a continual release. And that continual release is determined, is kind of described by the, the rate of uh, emissions and the rate of, you know, the wind speed, which kind of uh, is what's uh, you know, moving that downwind. Okay, so that's kind of the first term here, Q over U. The next, we see this second, this first set of square brackets is second term, e to the, you know, y squared over two sigma y. And here this looks, this is just like what we saw in the diffusion model. So we're seeing um, things diffusing out laterally uh, according to a Gaussian model. And where y is that lateral distance relative to the wind speed. So the, the zero on that is the direct, you know, directly downwind. Uh, and, you know, plus or minus or is in kind of the left or the right of that main downwind direction from the, the point source. And then it has this sigma y, which is the dispersion coefficient, which de describes, you know, it's literally uh, a standard deviation that describes how much uh, that plume has uh, diffused out laterally. And as we'll see later that this uh, diffusion coefficient depends on X. Uh, when we had the, the, just the plane diffusion model, the 1D diffusion model, that the, that the diffusion depended on time. Uh, but here, uh, like I said, since we're doing this for a steady state, downwind direction, downwind distance X is essentially a proxy for time because you have some constant wind speed. Uh, so again, we're combining x and time. So we'll find that that dispersion varies with downwind distance, the standard deviation. Uh, z is our elevation above ground. And then we have a similar dispersion coefficient in the z direction. And then we have this effective stack height h coming in as well. And it comes in in two places. So first, in this first Gaussian term here, uh, it's acting kind of as a mean. So remember in the Gaussian, you had some, you know, variable minus a mean. And so that essentially centers the Gaussian plume on the effective stack height H, which makes perfect sense that the, if we have uh, an emissions that is centered around H, we want uh, to reset the mean to height H uh, rather than having it at zero, which is what it is for Y. Uh, and, and from our previous uh, diffusion models where the emission source was at zero. Um, this second term, which has a plus H, is what accounts for the amount uh, that is deflected off the ground. So the Gaussian plume model uh, assumes, like the diffusion model, that, that there is no, um, no removal of mass from the system. And so as diffusion as things diffuse down towards the ground, they're assumed to, you know, essentially rebound off the ground in the other direction. Uh, and so that's achieved by essentially creating an imaginary second source uh, at H underground that is diffusing outward in kind of the amount so, such that it's the mirror image of the actual source. So, so whatever diffuses 
below ground in the in the centered plume, the plume centered on H is exactly matched by what this imaginary source is diffusing from a mirror image. That's kind of how, you know, why this second uh, term is in here. It's um, accounting for uh, the fact that the boundary condition ground at height zero exists and uh, prevents uh, pollution from going, you know, past that and also that it's not absorbing. If, if you actually had a pollutant that, where the ground was absorbing, you know, anything that hit the ground stopped, you would drop that term. Okay, so this shows the same model rearranged a little bit to um, again, emphasize that this Q over U is the source strength. Uh, we have this diffusion in the Y direction and we have this diffusion in the Z direction. And uh, both of those are going to de depend on downwind direction, downwind distance, which again is just a proxy for time since that particular amount of mass was emitted um, from the smoke spec. Cool. In the next video, I'm going to dive into uh, how we actually solve for the what's the only thing that's left here, which is the dispersion coefficients. We just have said verbally that they're a function of x. So we'll dive into how, where those come from. And then after that, we'll do another video kind of explaining how to figure out what the effective stack height is. Thanks.